to be here with you. Uh, my name is Oleg Osipov. Uh, I represent Saratov State University. And today I'm going to introduce uh, a joint work with Ekaterina Rogachko on the topic uh, analysis of four joint queuing systems with heterogeneous servers and threshold control policy. So let's start. Uh, four joint queuing systems are uh, widely used to model parallel and distributed systems. Uh, some examples of these systems include RAID, distributed web application, uh, MapReduce, grid, multipath, routing networks, multiprocessor uh, systems, and so on. In this system, uh, arriving job uh, is split for service by numerous servers and join before departure. So this slide uh, contains some works. Uh, this works consider different kinds of for join queuing systems and their application. For example, uh, the second one uh, considers three important kinds of for join queuing networks with uh, different ways to distribute tasks of a job between service and different ways to synchronize uh, this task. Uh, but uh, despite this, there are few uh, articles that consider control for, for join uh, queuing system. For example, it's only uh, the third article. Uh, but uh, a lot of works uh, are devoted um, to multi-server queuing systems with uh, heterogeneous servers. One of the important problems for such systems is to find an optimal control policy. Uh, so many cases, uh, in many cases, the threshold control policies are used as an optimal solution for a wide class uh, of queuing systems with heterogeneous servers. So in this work, uh, we are going to focus on for joint queuing systems with heterogeneous servers and threshold control policy. So let us consider the queuing systems, which is depicted in the slide. So as you can see, uh, the system uh, consists of M heterogeneous servers and infinite capacity queue. Uh, jobs uh, arrive at the system according to a Poisson process with red lambda. And each job uh, consists of dehomogeneous task. Uh, the service times have exponential distribution with the following rates and as you can see here uh, the rates are different and we order these rates in the decreasing order. So uh, it means uh, the first server is a faster server but at the same time uh, the last one is the slowest. So we assume a task of a job is serviced independently but a job considered completed only when all uh, tasks associated with the job have finished uh, their execution. Only then we uh, can say that uh, the job is completed your ex uh, its execution. Uh, as I said before, uh, servers have different service rates and it is not always reasonable to assign tasks to some uh, slow servers. So we may define some control policy to, uh, and for example, we can uh, define threshold control policy presented in slide. So really speaking, uh, there are some threshold levels for QLAN. Uh, the levels you can see in slide, and if there is some predefined number, of task in the queue, we, uh, then we turn on a certain server and assign the task to the server. In other words, uh, we prefer not to send task to slow servers. Instead of this, we prefer uh, waiting for any fast server uh, to become idle. However, uh, if there are too many tasks, a task from a uh, queue may be assigned to slow server. So at the arrival times uh, of a new task, we have uh, two options. 
first of all, uh, we can send a task from the front of the queue to the fastest idle server. Uh, if uh, there are enough uh, tasks in the queue. So it means uh, the condition takes place. Uh, and the second option uh, is to leave uh, the task in the queue. So assume a task finish its service at a server. Then uh, we have again two options. Uh, we can, uh, first of all, a task from a queue will be assigned to server. Uh, if uh, this condition takes place, it means we have uh, enough task in a queue. Otherwise, the server will be idle. So uh, let's now consider the states of the system and define the state as a following vector. Uh, here, the first element uh, denotes the number of jobs in the queue. And the second one uh, is the number of tasks for the, for the services job in the queue. Uh, other elements uh, define uh, the states of servers, as you can see in expression two. Uh, thus, we have uh, a continuous time a Markov chain, and uh, we can divide all states into levels. The levels, uh, the level is a set of states and defined uh, by following expression. Uh, as you can see, all states within uh, a level uh, contain the same number of job in the queue. Uh, it's easy to see from transition rates uh, that the process uh, moves up and down between levels uh, one at a time. So also define uh, R uh, as minimal number uh, where condition takes place. And, uh, uh, when the condition takes place, a cardinality of all levels is the same as uh, number of tasks for each job. It equals three. Uh, hence, uh, the process is quasi birth and death process, and its addition matrix has the following form, as you can see. So, uh, if the stability condition takes place, the stationary distribution can be found uh, by the matrix geometric method. Uh, once uh, the stationary distribution is computed, a variety of other performance measures may be obtained. Uh, for instance, you can see the average number of jobs uh, in the queue. So for jobs, their average job waiting time in the queue is the average time that the job waits in the queue uh, before the first of its task, I mean the task associated with the job, uh, is assigned to a server. Uh, so uh, this value can be found by a uh, little slow. Move on and consider the average response time for jobs. Uh, the response time uh, is the total amount of time uh, a job spends in the system. Uh, so average response time for job uh, can be defined by uh, as a sum of the of uh, the sum two values. Uh, in this expression, V is the average job service time. Uh, which is defined as the average total time uh, required to process all tasks associated with the job once the first task is assigned to a server. So to obtain uh, uh, the average job service time, uh, we can consider uh, the service process of uh, all the tasks of an arbitrarily chosen uh, target job once uh, its first task uh, is assigned to a server. 
to assume when the first task is assigned, the queuing system is in uh, some state. So we have uh, two cases for number of uh, jobs in the queue. In the first case, uh, we have enough uh, task, uh, we have enough number uh, in the queue and all servers are busy. Uh, and in this case, task of a tagged job sequentially occupy uh, available servers. So the service process of a tagging job uh, for both uh, can be described by an absorber markup chain. Uh, for first case, uh, the state of the chain uh, is a vector. Uh, the vector consists from two elements. Uh, the first one is the number of tasks of a ticket job in the queue and the second element is the set of indices for busy servers that process task of the ticket job and we have uh, one serving state uh, also we can define uh, the initial probability distribution by the following expression and also we need uh, the uh, generator matrix uh, for this process. So for now, uh, this Markov chain is totally described and we can, uh, we can define, we can calculate uh, absorbent time. It is known that the time uh, have uh, has pH distribution and the expected absorption, absorption time could be calculated by this expression. So uh, let us now turn to the second case. We apply, we can apply the similar approach and we will not stay uh, on this case in detail. So assume we have the state space, uh, we have initial distribution and we have generator. So we can obtain the expected absorption time. And now uh, combining these two cases, uh, combining these two values, we can uh, write the pressure for the average job service time. And uh, finally, uh, let's look at a numerical example. So we consider uh, acuity systems that consist of uh, M3 uh, servers with following service rates. To, and we illustrate the advantages of uh, threshold control policy. For this, we consider the fastest free server policy. In this case, all level values are equal to one. It means each time uh, we will assign a task to the fastest free server. It means uh, there are no cases uh, when Q contains some task and there are free servers in the system. The figures present uh, the average response time for the optimal threshold control policy. Uh, we find this by brute force method and the fastest free server policy for different values of number task uh, for a job. As you can see, uh, for the optimal threshold control policy, the average response time is lower. So, summarize some, some results. Uh, we started a Markovian for joint queuing system with heterogeneous service and threshold control policy. Uh, applying a matrix geometric method, we obtain the stationary distribution and other performance measures. Uh, the results can be used for the performance analysis of multiprocessor systems and other modern distributed systems. And I think uh, 
An interesting topic for future research is to obtain the optimal threshold counter policy, uh, which means I minimize, for example, the long run average number of jobs uh, in the system or the average response time. Uh, thank you for your attention. Okay, Alek, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, so please proceed with questions. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, so like uh, um, it's very nice uh, for me that uh, the problem of heterogeneous system uh, uh, becomes more popular in Russia. It is very good. Uh, the following question I have, uh, uh, you use two uh, terms, um, jobs and tasks. Is it the same or there are some, some uh, connections between these two uh, terms? Uh, yes, we... So job mm. and task, is it the same or uh, some job uh, can have uh, several tasks or something like this? Yes. Uh, a job consists uh, from tasks. Uh, one job and consists of uh, one of job. Tasks. One job consists of uh, the number of tasks. Okay. Okay. Is, and uh, this number of tasks uh, must be smaller than the number of servers, or not? Uh, for this case, we considered only when uh, the number of tasks is smaller. Okay, and how uh, did you calculate, uh, or, or you don't uh, calculate the optimal threshold levels here? Yeah. <laughs> uh, or you use, uh, now, some, use some, some specified threshold yeah. levels and uh, make some numerical examples? Uh, for now, we uh, found, we search uh, this uh, optimal police. Uh, by the brute force method, but it is interesting topic to. Uh, uh, sorry, this. which method uh, did you use? Can you once more tell me? B brute force. Mm, is it numerical method or what is it? Uh, it is yes, it is numerical method, but uh, just we. Uh, uh, create all policies and uh, choose the optimal. Choose the optimal one, but uh, the optimal policy with respect to which uh, optimization criterion? What do you to minimize? minimize uh, uh, the average job response time. The average jobs response time. Yeah. So that means yeah. uh, in, in the system, yes, in the system. Yes, in the system. Yes. Uh -huh, okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Uh, Osipov, this is Udo Grieger calling from uh, Germany. I have a related question uh, regarding the further study on the matrix. If I look on current cloud computing, we are sometimes interested uh, in the quantiles uh, or in tail distributions. So not uh, in the variants. Uh, as such, uh, plus the mean, but really in the actual uh, delayed, uh, uh, tail of the delay distribution. Since you have a phase type, you can uh, calculate it in a closed form in, that you can compute numerically. Have you been thinking also in this uh, direction? And the other item is regarding efficiency and comparison. Uh, recently, people like uh, Marcus Fiedler in uh, Hanover have studied a approximation of four join networks um, by means of a Marx plus algebra. Did you also consider a fast approximation to calculate the means or as I said, the quantiles up to now, or will it be a part of future work of yours? Thank you. Yes, thank you for your questions. It is very interesting topic for me. Uh, but now we consider only this case. Uh, but uh, I'm famous with uh, 
some um, works uh, that you said. And it could be a really interesting uh, topic for future research. Thank you.